In this video, we'll see how to index and modify multi-dimensional arrays. We'll start by making a new 3x4 array called bar from a list of lists. Before we start accessing elements from this array, it's important to understand its structure. Internally, bar is just a contiguous block of memory storing some data. Since we defined bar using a list of lists, NumPy makes it a two-dimensional array giving it two axes for indexing its values. Since this array has two axes, or dimensions, NumPy knows to interpret our data as a rectangular array, where axis 0 is the row axis, and axis 1 is the column axis. This means we can subset bar using a combination of row indices and column indices. Let's see some examples using the 2D array we just created. So if you want to get the element at index 1, 2, you can just do bar square brackets 1, 2. If you want to get the entire first row as a 1D array, you can do bar square brackets 0. Remember, bar can be interpreted as an array of arrays, so the first element of bar is just a 1D array. Now, if you wanted to get the entire first row as a 2D array, you can use the none keyword for the column index, like bar square brackets 0, comma, none. We'll learn more about the none keyword later. Alternatively, you can use slicing for the row index, like bar square brackets colon 1. This is like saying, give me every row up to but excluding the second row, the row at index 1. And if you're feeling fancy, you can combine slicing, lists of indices, and negative indexing like this, bar square brackets 1 colon 3, square brackets negative 2, negative 1. And this is like saying, give me the values uh, between rows 1 and 3, 3 exclusive, and the second to last column and the last column. And of course, you can make modifications. So for example, we could replace the top left element of bar with negative 1 like this, bar square brackets 0 comma 0 equals negative 1. Or we could replace the second row with the third row, like this, bar square brackets 1 equals bar square brackets 2. Or we could insert zeros along the diagonal, like bar square brackets, square brackets 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2 equals 0, 0, 0. Notice here that the ith row index and the ith column index combine together to select a specific array element. For example, row index 1 combines with column index 1 to select this element of bar, which we replace with this value. All right, so we've taken a hard look at indexing a two-dimensional array. What about three and higher dimensional arrays? I suspect many people, including my former self, interpret three-dimensional arrays as rectangular prisms like this. The problem is that this spatial model breaks down when you go above three dimensions. So a better mental model, in my opinion, is when you have a one-dimensional array, think of a row of numbers. When you have a two-dimensional array, think of a matrix, so rows and columns. When you have a three-dimensional array, instead of thinking of a rectangular prism, Picture a row of matrices. Then when you get to four dimensions, you can imagine a matrix of matrices. And it's easy to see how you could expand this to any number of dimensions. Now, if you have a three-dimensional array, like this one called SU that I have pre-written here, and you make an assignment like, let's say, SU square brackets zero, comma colon comma one equals five. It's easy to picture the result before you see it because you can interpret this assignment as saying, set the first matrix, every row, the second column equal to five. So now if we print SU, you can see that's exactly what it did. It picked out the first matrix, every row, 
but only the second column and updated those values to be five. So everything we've looked at for indexing a two-dimensional array can be carried over to three or higher dimensional arrays. Now, for the sake of full disclosure, I'm actually glossing over some gritty details and complex scenarios, which I'll cover later when we do advanced array indexing. And if you don't finish this course, I highly recommend you watch that lecture before you bow out. But at this point, my goal is to cover the basics of array indexing so that we can start working with arrays in a meaningful way.